Queen City Brewery. You guys opened your doors in 2016. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, which was right when kind of that that boom was happening in the city. You know, it was. Um, uh, I don't know exactly what number you guys were in the city. Probably if we want to count the the Millers and the Sam and uh, Hofbrau House and so you're, you're probably in the 30s as far as how many breweries were open before or when you guys opened your doors. So it was like kind of right when things really started exploding. Uh, yet you guys had a very distinct personality to what Queen City was compared to some of those other places. We had seen the success of massive tap rooms like Rheingeist or Madry or, you know, any one of the other ones you want to name. And you guys went the complete opposite direction, went nano brewery, went kind of that, um, I know Matt Damaris has called it the, uh, the dive bar tap room before, uh, clubhouse, you know, all those kind of those, 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 uh, uh, qualifiers that people kind of put in front of it. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about kind of what Queen City was, how you guys did things different than, than what other places were done. Yeah. Um, so the original, you know, goal that we had or the original plan that we had actually wasn't to be, um, as they said, like Matt Damaris said, um, a dive place or anything like that. Like we actually did have some very large ambitions. I hate calling it a dive, by the way. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. But like when you kind of look at it in hindsight, um, almost a, a, an older friend of mine from a previous job, he kind of referred to it as like a speakeasy, like almost that old school place as a, you know, as off the beating path as where you went for, you know, delicious beer um, and where police people can go just to meet up, hang out or meet new people, interesting people, right. you know, just not the run of the norm uh, type situation. But, you know, I think our, our original vision was something much larger. Um, our, at least my original vision, I'm not really sure if, if all of our uh, original members would agree to it, but it was more something along the lines of where it's almost like a, a cohabitat or a co-working type environment sure. where, yeah, we had the tap room, but it was, I was envisioning something much larger where we would be able to rent out space, whether for restaurants or for, uh, you know, bakeries, use our spent grain and stuff and, you know, things along those lines and also have apartments. So I was actually looking almost like doing almost like a, a whole city planning type thing almost. Right. But, you know, as we kept looking into and diving into it, plus we were at the time, we were in our very um, young, or early 30s. Some of us were in our very late 20s. Um, so it was also, we didn't really have a whole lot of money. Um, was it the first business that all of you guys had started? Yeah. Or was it anybody that, yeah. yeah so or no, I mean, just in general. In had, general. Had anybody else started any businesses no. before that? So, I mean, that's, it's a lot to jump into. It is. It's, it's a lot to jump into. And, you know, I think we, we had different mindsets and, and we wanted to go on different paths. Like my whole mindset was, Hey, let's, let's try to put something together, like a quality product and start kind of, you know, pitching it around to try to get some investors. Because right. I also had this idea that, well, if we want it to be something that's going to be big and impactful, you know, you do need money to do that. Sure. Um, things didn't really work out that way. And, and and part of the group that I was with, you know, they looked at it as, well, if we don't open our doors soon, then we're going to miss the window or we're going to miss that, you know, the boat, so to speak. Um, so I think we had some differing opinions there. And so that's where I, you know, we really kind of shopped around. We were really looking for something that was affordable, something that we could try to turn around real quick in terms of, you know, construction and things like that. And that's where we kind of settled on in, uh, in Blue Ash. Um, you know, and going through that, that's when I really kind of was like, yo, all right, so let's put the other dream aside from now. Let's use this as like a starter, uh, almost like the mad tree environment, right. you know? Right. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of from there, it was like, all right, let's try to build something here. And that's where we decided that, you know, we're not really going to be the run of the mill type brewery. And there's no, I'm not trying to cast aspersions right, or right. anything along those lines, but I wanted to be different. I wanted to stand out. And I think that's where, you know, you could really see it. Um, Granted, we didn't really get to accomplish all the things we wanted to accomplish in terms of, you know, the internal build out, the decoration, sure. things like that. But we're still, at the time at least, we were thinking, well, let's still try to go off of the, the original motivation for these breweries in Cincinnati. Because, you know, a lot of them were, I hate to say it, but like hole in the walls. Um, they were off the beating paths. I mean, even like looking at Blank Slate. I remember the first time we tried to even go to Blank Slate, uh, myself and a friend of mine, we, we couldn't find it, right. you know? So, but then we found it, it's like, oh my God, now we're never gonna forget where it's at. Thank you for watching. For more episodes, more importantly for full episodes, go to your favorite podcasting platform, look for Cincy Brewcast and subscribe to the show. New episodes drop every single Monday and you can see why we like to call it the voice of Cincy Craft.